Okay, Julia. <laughs> okay, Julia. <laughs> well, a little bit of wine for me, a little bit of wine for the dish. <laughs> How's it? Hey, well, we're back. We're gonna take on another French uh, technique today. This is also another Thomas Keller uh, dish. It is wine braised short ribs. They are pretty incredible. Time is the biggest workhorse in this particular thing because this is gonna take three days. And you're saying, three days? I can't eat this till Sunday? No freaking way. Well, let time do its thing. So day one, we're just gonna make uh, marinade and then uh, uh, marinate the, the meat overnight. Day two, it's going to be about browning the meat and braising. And then day three is our finish. We reduce the sauce, we glaze, and, and we enjoy. It's going to be pretty great. The ingredients list is pretty minimal here. Basically, it's just short ribs, uh, boneless if you can get them. Unfortunately, I couldn't, so I had to debone them and a um, good bottle of red wine. We'll talk about that later. And then you're gonna add mirepoix to that. That's got onions, carrots, leeks, uh, garlic cloves, and a bouquet garni. Now, bouquet garni, that's a new French term for us. <laughs> Last time I did this, I got some real crap about sachet. By the way, I know who you are, McGregor's. The difference between the sachet and bouquet garni is one of them is herbs and spices, and the other one is really just herbs. Continuing on with the marinade, we're going to uh, use a wine that we like to drink. Don't use a wine you don't like to drink. Only cook with something that you would actually drink. If it's crap, throw it out. No matter what it is. Okay? Whole bottle goes in. I'm going to bring this to a simmer. Once it's simmering, we're going to stick in all of the mirepoix and the uh, bouquet garni. Let that boil for a bit. Then we're going to um, let it cool down, add the, the meat, and that's going to sit for an entire day. Alrighty. I already chucked a few things in. There. Okay, once you get everything going in here, you're going to want to use uh, a torch or a lighter or something to burn off the alcohol. You may not actually see this flame uh, on video, but... Oh, it's showing up pretty good. Okay, looks like the flames have gone out. That probably means that the, uh, the alcohol is gone. And you want to test that by uh, giving it a good sniff and see if you have any nostril burn from the alcohol. And uh, I think it's gone. So once that's done, you're going to let this uh, marinade cool off, put it into a plastic bag, transfer the meat into it, um, and then put it in the refrigerator overnight. To brown the meat, you're going to uh, salt both sides and dredge it in a little bit of flour, shake off the excess, and then put it into a pan of hot oil and brown each side, turning until they look good. Meanwhile, you're going to take the red wine marinade, put it into a pot, get it to a simmer, and all the impurities and the scum and stuff is going to come to this top, which you will then skim out because we want it to be as clarified as possible. So once you've clarified the wine marinade, you're going to put that and the short ribs back into the pot and add beef stock and chicken stock. Veal stock if you have it, beef stock's fine, I used beef. And uh, that'll be a braising liquid. It's gonna completely submerge the meat and uh, it's got all the mirepoix in there. And you put the bouquet garni back in for this three hour slow cook in your oven. Cartouche? Another French word? Are you kidding me? Come on, McGregor's. I know you can give me some crap about this one. You're gonna put this pot in the oven uncovered. But in order to keep reduction down, we're gonna put a cartouche on the top surface of the liquid. 
cartouche is basically just a piece of parchment paper. You fold it a certain way so that it fits the size of your pot. Cut the tip off so you get a little hole in the center. That lets steam and evaporation happen in the center, but everything stays in the pot. Put the pot into the oven and let it braise at 275 Fahrenheit for three hours. Alarm uh, just went off. Woke up. We're gonna go see if it's meat fall off the bone time. Uh, uh, that's p.m. No, that's a.m. <laughs> an idiot. <laughs> and yes, I'm gonna down my pajamas. So we are checking for softness, which this is nice and soft, and it's ready to go. So we're gonna pour it out into a container and just leave it in the fridge overnight, another day. Good night. Day three of this epic, pandemic, apocalyptic meal. Bring the, uh, the sauce back to a simmer and then strain it. Okay, final part of the, part of the process is basically rewarming the, the bits of meat that you want to eat for the, any particular meal in this sauce. And you're going to reduce the sauce at the same time. So right now. These are pretty rich, so you don't need a lot, honestly. So as this starts to reduce, you can see it's thickening up. Basically, we're just using the reduction to warm up the cold meat again. And you want to do that, of course, by basting. So as this beautiful wine and sauce starts to thicken, continuously baste your meat and it'll warm up straight through. You can uh, test by pushing a finger in, see how soft it is. If there's, uh, it's pretty soft, you can feel the heat, and you're pretty much ready to go. And we're gonna serve this now. Okay. Just before you're gonna serve, uh, drop in a little bit of butter. It's gonna add some silkiness to the sauce. Let it melt in. We're ready to go. Um, the sides we've got here are uh, a polenta and some sauteed mushrooms with onions and of course the uh, braised short rib and beautiful sauce. So let's go ahead and plate it up. Polenta, we get it with our chicken stock. It's got a little bit of milk in it, a little bit of butter, not too much. Um, but we're keeping it as a soft polenta. This is actually a big piece. Ready? Put some chives. There it is. Red wine, braised short rib, slow cooked of course, three days worth of work, but just beautiful flavors. A rich dish, you don't need a lot on the plate. Enjoy. <laughs> you know, anytime I put this hat on, I become fully fluent in French. Let's keep score. What have we got so far? We've got uh, bouquet garni, we've got sachet, we've got mise en place, we've got mirepoix, we've got um, gentil French hat. Uh, who knows what else? <laughs>